here's another example. Now, we looked at a few examples where the problem came to us. The expression looked like two big terms, and each side had a quantity in parentheses. And right away, we just started comparing those two quantities in parentheses, because if they matched, we were ready to get right to our answer. If they didn't, maybe we had to make a little move to flip signs, and then we got to our answer. We, we can encounter problems like those, but what we'll probably see more often when we have to do factor by grouping, we'll see an expression with no sets of parentheses. We're just going to see four separate terms. So when we see these four separate terms, you want to get these steps down. It's factor by grouping, so we're pairing up the first two terms and the last two terms. It's kind of tough to see. I got an orange line here splitting up my first two terms and the last two terms. And I want to point something out that I've put my line so that this sign right here, I can tell that it's going with the 15x. Whether it's a plus or a minus, I want you to be cautious about where you make your split that this sign in the middle always gets attached to that third term. So I can see that my first two terms are 6x squared minus 2x. The last two terms are positive 15x with a negative 5. Of course, paying attention to this is much more important when this sign is a negative. So I want you to just get into that habit already of being cautious about what this sign is and where it goes with that third term. OK, so we've got the first two terms paired up, and we're looking for the GCF. So between 6 and 2, we can divide from both of those coefficients a 2. Our first term here has 2x's, and the second one has 1x. So there's enough for us to take 1x from each term. So we have a 2x out front of parentheses as our GCF. What are the terms that we need to have in parentheses? 2x times what two terms are going to equal these two terms that we started with? Well, the 2x times 3x will give us the 6x squared. We got the 2 times 3 to the 6. 1x needs a second x to get us to the x squared. And 2x times what will get us to negative 2x? We need in there just a negative 1. OK, Though that left side is on hold. Let's go over to the right side. And we're just looking at a positive 15x minus 5 and thinking about, well, what's the GCF between these two terms? And we can divide them both by 5. So a 5, it's a positive 5 in front of parentheses. So positive 5 times what will get us to the positive 15x? Well, we need a positive 3 and 1x. And then this positive 5 times negative 1 will get us to that negative 5. OK, so our, to start these problems, when we see four terms, it's to split them in half. Find a GCF from the first pair and find a GCF from the second pair. And now when we're at this line right here, we're comparing these two terms, this big term on the left and this big term on the right. If we see that their sets of parentheses match, then that is one of our factors in the answer. And the other factor comes from what we had left over. It was, it's the GCF from each of these two halves. So it's a 2x and a positive 5. So it's 2x plus 5 is the second factor. And there's our answer. OK, so here's one for you to try. If you want to, you can go back and look at that last example one more time. It's going to be pretty much the same steps here. We're going to split this problem in half. and. Look for the GCF from the first two terms and the last two terms. And just make sure that what you're putting out in front of the, each set of parentheses is really the GCF, the greatest common factor. OK, so put this video on pause and take a few minutes. Try this problem out. Come back here, and we'll check out the answer. OK, so pairing up the first two. I see a GCF of 6a, and in parentheses, 2a plus 3. From the second pair, these last two terms, the GCF is 5b, and in parentheses, 2a plus 3. So we're ready to get right to the end of this problem. It's 2a plus 3 is the first factor, 6a plus 5b the second factor. OK, another example, we're taking the same approach because 
This is an expression that has four terms. I see four terms, I try factor by grouping. Pair up the first two terms, pair up the last two terms. So let's do that. From the first two terms, we do have a GCF. We have 2a that we can put in front of parentheses. Left over inside parentheses, we will need two terms. We'll need 2a and a positive 1. What about this second set of terms, this negative 14a minus 7? So if you think back to, there was an example we did towards the end of the GCF section where we looked at two terms that were both negative and thought about factoring out a negative number. There are a couple different ways we could look at what's about to happen. And I'm not going to say that one way is better than the other. You need to basically go with what's comfortable for you. And you'll see how we want it to end out, how we want it to end up because of course, we need, if we see a 2a plus 1 here, in order to finish this problem up, we're going to need to see a positive 2a plus 1 in parentheses here. So maybe you've got some ideas about what's going on. What I have here is me just thinking not about factoring out a negative GCF, just thinking between a 14 and a 7, I can divide out a 7 evenly from both of those. So I'm just doing that at this point. I'm, I'm cautious about what terms are going to be left inside the parentheses. So if I, do, if I do factor out a positive 7, then my terms left over inside parentheses are negative 2a and negative 1. And I'm at this point where I need to compare what's in parentheses, and I don't see that they are identical. So I need to do that move where I flip the sign of the GCF I'll change that 7 into a negative 7 because if I can change the sign of the GCF, now I can change the sign of each term in the parentheses. I can change the negative 2a to a positive 2a. I can change the negative 1 into a positive 1. And then I can see that these quantities do match and finish up with the answer. Now, I want to just say to you, it's not necessary, not necessary that we do this middle step here. If you do see from the left side, we have a positive 2a plus 1, and then you look here and see two negative terms, you maybe have an idea that we need to factor out a negative 7. And I th it's definitely okay for you to see that and do that right away. It's not necessary, not necessary to pull out a positive 7 and then flip signs. If you're clued into the fact that you're going to have to flip signs to get your quantities in parentheses to match, then you can definitely say, well, I'm just going to factor out a negative 7. And just be cautious with your signs so that you're accurate when you put in a positive 2a and a positive 1 inside the parentheses. So the 2a plus 1 is our first factor. The 2a minus 7 will become our second factor.